So let's get into uh, food, food systems. So um, this is a place where you can cut some, uh, some, some costs off. Um, I used this knockoff jet boil. This thing is, uh, I found it on Amazon. It's by a company called Blue with two U's, B-L-U-U. Um, I want to say this thing is like 45 bucks. Uh, whereas a, a real jet boil is like over a hundred dollars or something ridiculous. Um, we had two real jet boils and two of these. And let me tell you, these things work just as well as the jet boils do. Um, they're pretty awesome. And then you need to get yourself a titanium spork or spoon. Really, there's, I can't think of any good reason to have a, a fork. So if I was going to buy it again, I would probably just get a straight up spoon, not the spork, because honestly, these things are just kind of annoying. Um, titanium, super lightweight, whatever, doesn't rust. And um, the one thing I did screw up on, I got a regular size spork. Uh, I would have liked to have had the long spoon that's like two inches longer. Um, I didn't understand why people use those until I started eating my freeze dried meals. Because if you look at these bags, you rip them off right here. You gotta, to get to the bottom of the bag, you basically gotta stick your fingers down in the bag. Not ideal, but, um, but anyway, so this, this blue kit, it actually comes with, uh, like a coffee, like a French press coffee kit, um, that fits inside of here if you're into making coffee. Personally, I couldn't care less about making coffee out there. If I really needed a caffeine boost, I would rather just, like, drink, um, you know, like a, some of that Ignite powder by Mountain Ops that has caffeine in it. That'll do the trick, but I'm not a huge caffeine guy, so um, I just didn't bring it with me. It's just extra weight that I didn't need. So anyway, uh, I usually just slip the spoon right in there and it, it all fits together real nice. Um, so inside of here, I've got a gas can. Um, this one's basically empty. So I used one can for the entire two weeks that we were out there. Um, I don't know exactly how many meals I cooked with it, but I'd say probably, I don't know, like 24-ish in that ballpark. I could tell you that if I count what I have left. I did 20 to 24 uh, meals with one of these little canisters. And I do have a second canister somewhere around here. Here it is. Um, when once this one started getting kind of low, I started carrying the extra one, but I never ended up needing it, um, although one of the other guys did. So anyway, uh, you get your canister there. Um, it comes with this little tripod thing that you can set the canister on. Um, it just pops into place, um, so it has a little more stability. And then there's the regulator, and you screw that onto it. When you screw it on, spin it on quick, otherwise there's basically the point where it breaks the seal, you just kind of lose gas. But um, there's a little igniter on there. Um, I found that it doesn't work very well at high elevation when the oxygen is in lower concentration. Um, the, same, the same issue existed with the jet boil, so it's not just with this one. Um, and then you've got your cup right there. Uh, a lot of these, they come with like a little cup that sits on the bottom here. Um, but I didn't bring it. In fact, when I bought it, I didn't realize that that was a measuring cup and I threw it away. Uh, but there are lines on the inside of this thing to get your measurements of how much water you're using. But anyway, this thing worked out really well for me. Um, I'm happy with it. It was cheap. Like I said, I want to say it was like 45 bucks or something like that. It all fits in there very nicely. So I would not waste my money on Jetboil. Sorry, Jetboil. I know you guys claim to be uh, like an American company, even though everybody knows that you probably get that thing out of the same place as this thing and then just stick an American name on it. Uh, but anyway, uh, this comes with like a little uh, pouch situation. I lost my spoon. There it is. Um, it comes with this little pouch, which 
frankly, you don't really need because, like I said, this all stays together pretty well. But I like containers and pouches, so I kept the pouch. What, what I often did was uh, when I had the, the Idahoan potatoes that I would mix in to absorb some water. Uh, one thing you need to make sure of is that since you're reusing that packet, you want to make sure that you're not um, that you're not spilling it all over your bags. Uh, so I uh, would basically roll it up and stick it inside of this pouch so that it would prevent it from spilling all over the place. So anyway, stick that in my pack somewhere right there. Um, and then my meals, I would just take my meals and just kind of sandwich them between the uh, sleeping bag and the side here. and. You'd be surprised how many you can fit in there, especially considering right now I don't have the um, the vapor pack maxed out. You can extend these uh, little cinch straps here. It's going to give you a little extra space. So basically when I go up the mountain, when I had a lot of stuff, I would open these up and it just creates a ton of extra space that you can use in the pack. And like I said, I was able to put five days worth of meals in there and I probably could have stuffed more in there if I needed to, uh, but that's... Uh, like 15 meals. Um, so those went in there. Uh, what else we got? Um, okay, so then I mentioned before with the sleeping bag that this company makes a uh, like a bag liner, uh, which I think is a great idea if you're sleeping in much colder weather. Um, and Mike was using one in his sleeping bag, and that's fine and all, but. Personally, uh, I think that this right here is far more effective. These are uh, thermal underwear, they're merino wool. These were really cheap. They're just like 150 uh, gram per square foot uh, base layer. And it's just an Amazon brand. I'm trying to find the name of it right now because here it is. Um, Danish Endurance. I think it was like 60 bucks for the the set so I've got long johns and a shirt and what I would do is I would actually sleep in these and that was important to me because one it gives me some extra warmth so if it does get cold um, I'm good to go two because it's merino wool it doesn't really smell bad because it's antibacterial um, and it would absorb all the stinkiness off of my skin just like a bag liner would do it would stop that stinkiness from getting on the sleeping bag so basically every time we got to camp I would uh, put you know when I was getting in bed, I would put on my undeep my underwear my thermal underwear as basically pajamas and I would sleep in that um, And I thought it was great because if I if I did wake up in the morning and it was gonna be super cold I could just leave them on and, and most of the time I did just leave them on I would put my clothes on over that while I packed up camp and then once you've gotten moving a little bit then like you warm up and then I would strip down before we left camp and I would uh, you know put them back in my pack but the nice thing was if I did run into a situation where I wanted to keep them on because it got colder I could just wear them under my clothes they're merino wool so it's you know good quality stuff it's not going to smell bad um, so I really liked having those as kind of my clothes to change into um, and then in case it got really cold I brought this fleece balaclava it's like it's like a beanie mask you can rock it as a gator. Uh, lots of things you can do with it. Fleece is definitely not the the lightest material, but I had this thing already. It's cheap and it's pretty small, um, and it's not that heavy. And there was quite a few times I woke up in the morning and it was really cold, and I, I would wear that or at nighttime. Uh, so I liked having that in my pack just in case. And I think that sums up yeah that sums up everything that i had in my center pouch now we are going to talk about the uh day hunting stuff so um all the stuff that i have laying around is basically what i'm going to need even when i'm just day hunting um and the first thing i want to talk about is my water filtering system um so i use the Sawyer Squeeze filter system, um, and this this worked out really well. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, it's pretty cool, just kind of being able to like 
anywhere you find water, get some water and you can uh, filter it out. So this, this is the filter right here. Um, and it's already got this little quick disconnect situation attached to it. Um, what I found to be the best way to do this um, is using one of these gallon bags. Now, I also had two of these one liter bags. And as I explained before, this particular one right here got downgraded to my pee bag. Uh, so I, I pee in this one in the tent so that I don't have to get out of the tent when it's cold or raining or whatever. So I need to label this one very carefully to show that it is my pee bag and I need to buy a new one. Because what I would generally do, uh, the way I have the water system set up in my pack currently, I can carry um, up to 11 liters of water, which sounds ridiculous. Most of the time you don't need that much. Most of the time you're good with three liters if you've got water on the way and, and you can keep filling up. Um, three liters is a good amount. Um, but there was times when we like wanted to go up to the top of the ridge and there was no uh, streams or anything that we could get water from. So we basically go to the last point that you could get water and fill up all of the water options and bring it everything up the mountain. And it sucked because your pack weighs like 80 pounds when you do that. But sometimes that's the only option. So um, anyway, so the Sawyer kit, when you buy it, it comes with a few different items. And I think mine's missing something, uh, which kind of sucks. But um, there's like a an adapter uh, that is basically female on both sides. So you could hook up a bag to another bag. So you could basically uh, unscrew this side. So imagine you fill this whole thing up with water unscrew that you could screw your filter on there and then there would be this female to female end there so that you could hook up another bag and filter water into one of the bottles now i don't seem to have that thing but it's okay because I, I actually managed pretty well just using this little nozzle and just uh, leaking water into whatever i needed it to go into so the reason that i have this quick disconnect on there um, over here my main bladder pouch which is in my my little top pack that sits on top of here there's a three liter um, and what I did with that is I connected this disconnect system here and I don't want to un I don't want to disconnect it right now because there's water in there and it's probably gonna come squirting out but basically I can take the mouthpiece off um, which is just the valve system that you drink from I can take that off and I can clip this little nozzle straight into it. So what I would do, and the really nice thing about these gallon bags, you'd fill the gallon up, take a carabiner, you know, I've got a couple carabiners on my pack. Uh, uh, another thing that actually worked really nice, uh, I one of the carabiners that I have on there, I would use to secure my sticks. So a lot of times, instead of hanging it from a branch or a tree or something, I would actually use my, uh, my trekking pole and I would just extend it as far as I could and I would clip this bag so it's hanging from the top of the stick and what what that does is it creates it uses uh, gravity it just lets gravity feed the the water through the filter and the really cool thing is I, you could just basically hook it up set your bag up with this up above it and walk away you could you know make lunch or whatever you had to do go to the bathroom do your thing um, and it would automatically fill up your your bladder by doing that so that was my main um, drinking source is that three liter now I also had another bladder which you can see the hose right here I don't know if you guys can really see that right there um, this is a two liter camelback the this camelback actually has its own quick disconnect but unfortunately it's a really close fit for the uh, the Sawyer um, quick disconnect but it doesn't click into place now you can stick it in there and kind of hold it um, and it will uh, it will move water into the bladder but what I ended up doing a lot of times with this one I would just pull the bladder out and then just like you know this was hanging and water just came out of it this was hanging so I just hold the you know water would be coming out of here and I would just hold the um, the bladder underneath it fill it up so I got two more liters in there and that's in the uh, one of my uh, bat wings so that is now uh, five liters right so we got three in the top two right there and then I had 
two of these um, and I would use one of them as raw water, one of them as clean water. Um, and so I would just keep them labeled and what you can do with the raw, raw water one, really simple, like when you get to camp, I would use the raw water first because uh, it was like kind of the most annoying one to use and you can only really use it when you're stopped. But I would just take this filter nozzle off and put it on there and just pour straight through the filter and I would use it to cook and stuff like that. Um, and then one of these I would have already filtered water in, so I had two more liters, two of these. Uh, so now we're up to seven liters and then we have the one gallon which is a little bit under four liters. So altogether we're talking 11 liters of uh, water capability, uh, which is more than enough. I don't think you're really ever going to need a whole lot more than that. Um, and it worked out really well, so that system was sweet. Um, when I replace the one liter bag that I now use as a pee bottle, I'm going to get two of them. So I'll have, I mean, I'm never going to use the pee bottle to, to store water that I'm actually going to drink or whatever, but, uh, but I'll have technically 12 liters of capacity, but I really doubt I'll use that 12th liter. I don't think I'm ever going to be that desperate. Um, so that's the water system, and I always would keep that in one of the bat wings because regardless of whether you're camping long or if you are just going in for a day hike, you're going to want to have the ability to get water. It's one of the most important things you can have out there. Um, so even if you don't plan on being out there very long, the whole filtration system doesn't weigh that much. Um, it's worth having it with you no matter what. Um, so that goes in there. Uh, this extra gas can that um, that I would carry when the other can was starting to get low, I'll just push that all the way to the bottom of the, uh, the bat wing pouch here, um, and you could just kind of forget about its existence. Um, then, oh, jump over here. This guy right here, this is one of the items that I saved a ton of money on. This is a puffy jacket. And man, this thing is just freaking sweet. Like, I loved it. Um, I used it a lot. I think that's inside out. Yeah, I used it a lot. These puffy jackets, they're down. Uh, so they, they just, they squish down to almost nothing. And once they start poofing back up, like they're so incredibly insulating. And um, this thing kept me warm uh, in pretty much all the conditions, even when it was like, you know, when it got below freezing, I would just be wearing my 150 grain or 150 gram per square foot, uh, um, what's it called? My merino wool hunting clothes and I would throw this over the top and I was good to go. Um, it's made by a company called Slow Down. Um, and I, I want to say it was like 40 bucks, 45 uh, on Amazon. The only thing that I hate is that this company doesn't make puffy pants, which sucks um, because if they did, I would absolutely buy them because this stuff is like super comfortable and it packs down super small. It only weighs like uh, three quarters of a pound, I think, something like that. Um, so anyway, I would always keep this uh, handy. Uh, if you're walking a lot, you start getting sweaty and um, you guys, you take a little break and stop. Uh, you don't want to get really cold, uh, so I would just bust out my puffy, throw it on while we were taking a break so that it wouldn't get cold, and then when we were leaving, I would just scrunch it back up and shove it right back into my uh, my batwing pouch. So uh, that was a really handy thing to have, always ready and available on the side here. Um, another thing. Let's talk, oh actually let me tell you about the other puffies. So this right here, these are puffy pants. Now I tried two different puffy pants. These ones, um, I, I don't even know what brand they are. I got them on eBay. There's like 10 different ones you can get on eBay. They all look exactly the same. They're all $45. It, it, it doesn't even have a brand. It's just some Chinese crap. Now it is made with duck down. Uh, I know because I cut it open to check and then I stitched it back up because uh, I didn't believe them because it's incredibly heavy. These are like pretty heavy duty pants. And I think the reason they're so much heavier is because the material they use on the outside 
it's just a heavier denier nylon um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing they're just going to be more resilient but uh, for the purpose of what I was looking for I wanted something really lightweight um, and these things were heavy they're like a pound and a half they're like double the weight of the jacket um, there are puffies you can get that are significantly lighter than this um, but I didn't find any for that cheap price these ones Again, they're 45 bucks. If I if it was a really cold time, I would absolutely have brought them. But it wasn't that cold, so they never went up the mountain with me, which is a shame. Um, and so next year, I'm definitely going to be trying to find some puffy pants that I can carry just in case we do have some colder weather. Uh, but that said, it wasn't super cold on this trip, and I never felt like I needed it. Um, the puffy jacket was great. I feel like I lose a lot of heat through the top of my body, uh, but I don't really care too much about my pants. Um, and I'll, I'll show you the hunting clothes that I was wearing. I felt pretty comfortable in those. And on top of that, if I did find myself feeling like my legs were too cold, I could always bust out my thermal underwear that I have in my camp pack and throw that on under my hunting clothes, which would have made me more than warm enough so that's kind of the reason that I didn't carry puffy pants and I don't know if I ever really will just for that reason um, because I think the thermals can do the trick just fine they're just a little more difficult to put on and off um, anyway so that's puffies uh, let's talk about oh this guy right here this thing's awesome uh, this is just a little seat pad I got this on Amazon I think it was like 950 um, it weighs absolutely nothing. It's just like a foam butt pad um, But it is so crucial because one sometimes the ground is wet and you don't want to sit and get your butt wet but no matter what the ground is cold and uh, When you sit on a rock or something like that you throw this thing down You you wouldn't believe how much of a difference this little butt pad makes um, most of the ones that I've seen and everybody kind of told me this on the trip they're like oh I've never seen one fold like that uh, most of them kind of fold like long ways um, this one folds up into a little rectangle like that and it fit perfectly into the pouches over here so I'd always have it like I always kept it right at the top of the pouch right here so that if we were gonna stop and sit down I could easily just pull it out of my um, my uh, la, 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 bat wing pouch um, so I like those get that it's cheap it's way cheaper than the Thermarest one and so there's another spot you can save yourself a little bit of money all right let's talk rain gear um, so this is a rain fly this is a, a Everly stock rain fly it's huge it fit around my pack fully loaded um, it would fit around it with my bow on it as well. Um, doesn't really weigh a whole lot. Come, I came with a little pouch. And uh, as far as rain gear goes, if you know you're going to be dealing with rain, you should probably put it somewhere where it's nice and accessible. But other than that, it's one of those things you just kind of want to have, but don't necessarily need to be able to get to it super easily. So I stuff it all the way down to the bottom of my, uh, my bat wing pouch. Um, I had, oh, you know what? It's in my truck because I'm in a hurricane right now. Um, I had a simple Columbia little rain shell, super lightweight. Um, it's black. I just already had it and I, was, I just wasn't ready to spend any extra money. So I'd already spent a lot of money. I figured if it's gonna be raining, more than likely we're gonna be hunkered down waiting for the rain to pass. So I was like, screw it. I'll just take this black one didn't spend any money on it and it was you know it wads up into a ball like that same as that rain fly so I'd shove that down in there so I would have uh, rain cover for the top half of my body I would have rain cover for my pack um, and I did not get a rain cover for my pants uh, but um, I was using the first light cord guide pants I'll, I'll show you guys those in a second they have some waterproofing built into them and I actually I didn't really get that wet like they they let some water through but I wasn't like soaking wet and um, like I said most of the time if it's raining we're gonna hunker down because we like to film we don't want to hunt in the rain so we're probably gonna put up a tarp or a tent and sit through the rain uh, so I didn't feel like I needed to carry a ton of rain gear 
but on the last day it just did not stop raining so we ended up hiking down the mountain uh in the rain and so it was nice to have that jacket and the rain fly for the pack especially and then the last thing i carry for rain is uh these are some boot gaiters some like knee high gaiters i already had these laying around i like to use them in florida because uh, I like using low boots because when I'm saddle hunting, uh, they're just a lot more comfortable. There's a lot less, um, they just hold a lot less heat so things stay cooler. And I like to use these for when I'm walking through the mud because they stop the mud from getting up over the top of the boot and then you just have like all this mud caked in your boot. So I had them anyway um, and they'll keep your calves, uh, or the bottom part of your legs at least, It'll keep it nice and dry when you're walking through like wet vegetation and stuff. So again, just like the other rain gear, I just shoved it down in there. Don't need to get to it unless shit's about to hit the fan. Um, we're getting into the last couple of items now. Uh, let's talk about these trekking poles. Again, saved some money here. These things, I want to say I paid 60 bucks for the pair of them. They are carbon fiber. They're super lightweight. They were more lightweight than the um, the black diamond ones that John and his brother were using. And while we were on the trip, John actually took a little spill and he broke one of his sticks. Um, and so we went to uh, Walmart and bought some that were basically identical to this. They were just like the Walmart brand. Uh, but they were the same damn thing. I swear they were made in the same factory. Um, so uh, super lightweight, carbon fiber, Nice and cheap. I think the Walmart ones were even cheaper. Um, on the end here, there's carbide tips, and it's incredible how well these carbide tips will grip into a rock. It's just like insane. Um, but also, you can get these little rubber tips. You get a bunch of different tips with them. Um, and I would carry the rubber tips in my uh, bino harness, because if we started getting into an area that we thought had elk, these metal tips will make a lot of noise when they're hitting the rocks as you're walking. Um, but uh, you put those rubber tips on there and they become a lot more stealthy. So, so I liked using them in certain situations. Um, and I will say about trekking poles, don't think that you're too good for trekking poles because these things are freaking awesome. I love using them on the way up and you really want to use them on the way down because going down hurts your joints a lot more. Uh, but the trekking poles make it so much easier. So. Don't be, uh, don't be a loser. Just use them. Anyway, I'm just moving this top pouch out of the way. So the way I would store these on my pack is basically, I would just slip them right down um, behind the vapor pack. Anyway, I would send that all the way down to the bottom. And what I actually wanted with them, I wanted them to stick out the bottom here of the, uh, the pack like out the bottom of the load shelf. Cause I didn't really want to have anything sticking out above my pack. Cause you're like ducking under branches and stuff. So they get kind of in the way. Um, but basically they could technically just fall right out the bottom. So I had a carabiner, which I attached to some of the moly loops on top of this pack. And I would just take the, uh, the straps on the handles for these, um, these, uh, trekking poles and I would just clip them right on top of the pack there that way they couldn't fall through uh, even if they tried um, and they were easy to get to you just unclip it pull them right out ready to rock and roll um, oh since we're talking about carabiners there's another carabiner that I had hooked onto the bottom right here in the front and what I would do with those is I would hook on my crocs or you can do flip-flops you just want to have some comfortable shoes you can take, you can put on when you're sitting at camp. Um, it feels really good to get your boots off uh, when you've been in them all day. Your feet are kind of wet and sweaty. You want to let your feet dry out. So Crocs are super lightweight. They're all foam. Same with flip flops. So you just clip them and they would just hang on the back of the pack right there. Um, and that worked out really nicely. Uh, almost forgot about this when I was talking about my water system. This is just a simple five or half liter water bottle. Um, and you know, I would fill that up with water sometimes if I was like carrying a lot of water in. It's just another half liter you can carry. 
um, but I just throw that into my top pouch here. Um, and the reason I carry that is because when I would use my emergency uh, or the, um, what's the stuff called? Uh, the electrolytes. Um, I just wanted to have that so that I could measure out a half liter easily. So I just like pour some water in there, put the electrolyte powder in, shake it up, let it sit for a while while I made breakfast and I would drink that in the morning. So that was a good thing to have. It's just a plastic water bottle. It doesn't weigh anything. Crush it up, stick it in there, good to go. Um, then these little pouches that are on the side of the, um, the bat wing pouches, I would, on one side, I would fill it up with uh, fasteners. So this pack system, uh, I mentioned it earlier in the video, but it comes with three of these compression straps that you can run from the frame to the other side of the frame. So if you have meat in there, you can compress it. Or if you just want to cinch down the backpack to get everything nice and close together. Um, so I just stuffed those in there because those really, I wasn't planning on using them until, uh, you know, we had meat to load up. So I just stuff them all the way down. And then here's another little strap um, that is part of the, uh, the quick release bow system. I don't know, I just have a bunch of straps. Stick them all in there. Um, they come in handy. You can tighten stuff down, whatever. Um, and then I got some paracord. Always good to have some paracord to hang up meat, whatever you got to do. And zip ties. You know, zip ties are always useful. And so all this stuff, all these fasteners, I would just shove them into this one side so that I had all my fasteners if I needed to fasten anything on that side. Finally, some glove liners. I don't like really heavy gloves. Um, but if it was going to be cold, I just wanted something to keep my hands a little bit warmer. So I just stuffed those in the other side, down one of those pouches, and we're good to go. And that is everything that I would carry in my pack when I was going up the mountain. Just like that. Um, and all together without water it weighs somewhere around 30 pounds um, and like I said when you put 11 liters of water in there you're suddenly carrying like 45 extra pounds uh, so it becomes a pretty heavy pack but I, I really love this pack um, and I'm definitely gonna keep it I'm not gonna upgrade it the pack is amazing uh, the last thing I'm gonna show you guys is how this quick release bow system works Everly Stock has a pretty cool quick release bow system where you use the butt pouch um, and uh, you can put your cam into there and then there's a strap that holds your riser against your bow and you can just pull the strap off, pull your bow out and you're ready to shoot. Super cool, keeps your bow out of your way when you're hiking, you're using your trekking poles, whatever. But here's the shitty thing. Everly Stock doesn't really give any good instructions on how to actually rig this thing up uh, and how to use it or any of that. So, um, and for the record, you can use this with pretty much any pack that you want. It doesn't have to be an Everly Stock pack. If you have something else and you want to use this uh, quick release system, it works pretty good. Um, another option that you could use is called the Bow Spider, and I actually have two of them. Um, but I didn't end up using it. Uh, and, and I've met the owner of the company, super nice guy, and uh, it may, it's a really good product, but it just wasn't exactly what I was looking for. Um, and the reason for that is, the thing I didn't like about the bow spider is that uh, if you attach the bow spider right up here, uh, basically it's a locking mechanism uh, where you, you have like a knob on your bow and it locks in and then your bow's just hanging there. Um, and then when you want your bow, you just basically pull it up and pull it out of the locking mechanism um, and it works great in theory but I, I just I didn't use it in the woods so I can't I can't be 100% sure of this but one of the things I just thought was gonna drive me nuts was the fact that it was hanging from one point and so I feel like the back of the bow is just gonna be like bouncing on my pack the whole time 
Now I know you could just throw a strap over it to stop that. And then when you get into like an area where there's more elk around, take that strap off so that your bow is ready to be grabbed. But honestly, I would rather just have my bow in my hand when I get to that point. And, um, and with this situation or, or this setup, it keeps your bow attached at the bottom and at the top so it's not moving around. So I, I just felt like this was a better system. Uh, no offense to, um, to the bow spider, it's a, it's a sweet system, but uh, I think this was just better for my purposes. So I'm going to show you guys how you can set this up. So in this particular case, I've got a F1 mainframe with a Vapor 2500 pack on there. Um, and just the configuration I have, it just worked out well to do it like this. So there's two loops on the bottom of the Vapor packs. And I basically ran the Molly webbing here uh, that's on the butt pouch um, through that Molly webbing down through the Molly on the back of the pouch. And then I clipped it around the uh, load shelf here. And the reason I like that is because now it's attached at the top and it's attached at the bottom. So it keeps it in a really solid position and your bow can't kind of like move around in there and swing around a lot. So it makes it a really solid uh, attachment point and it creates a cradle that I can stick my tent inside of here uh, so my tent stays on the load shelf and doesn't fall off. So that's the way I decided to set it up, but you can set it up whichever way that you like. This is just the way that I liked it. So the way it works, like I said, you take your bow and you basically protect your bottom cam. You stick it inside of this padded pouch on the bottom, just like that. You can either do it like this so that your stabilizer is on, you know, your bow is upright, um, your stabilizer is on the bottom, or you can uh, flip it upside down. Um, personally, I think I probably like it better upside down because um, when I go to pull it over my head, uh, when I do it upside down like this, it's already gonna be the right way up to, uh, to take a shot. But anyway, so you, you stick it in there and uh, there's your strap that I attached here somewhere. Let me pull this thing off. Um, and this strap, you run it around the riser, and I'm gonna stand this up so you guys can see. So you run it around the riser and down your strap. Um, and this particular pack has like a rubber uh, sort of like guide strap right here that um, you know you use for the, uh, you can run your, your hydration pouches through it. So I'm just gonna use that and on one side i'm going to run it through clip it so one side just has regular old um oh, i kind of did that backwards one side has just regular um clips like buckles and the other side has a quick release buckle personally i don't really think it was necessary to use two different buckles uh, because the fact is when this is under tension, like the regular one when it's under tension, and you pull it, it's still going to pop out. Um, so either one really works fine, but the whole point of the quick release buckle is this one right here. I don't know if you guys can see that clearly. It has these little wings on it right there, and the way that's designed is that when you push it, it shoots that thing out of there. So that way, but like I said, again, like, this is gonna be under tension anyway with the other one, so even if you use the other one, it's still gonna pop off and it's fine. Um, but so you attach one side to one side of your pack and then the other one you run down here and it has a little adjustment um, point right here so you can adjust the length of it. So on this side, we'll run it through the same strap on that side and tighten this up like so and that's going to hold my bow in place on the back of the pack nice and centered um, and you can you, know, you can adjust it figure out wherever you want it to be whatever um, i'm going to throw on the pack anyway so you can see the bow is on there it's real comfortable to carry uh here's the problem that you run into and this is part of the reason that i didn't want to use the bow spider when your pack is fully loaded, 
you can't reach your bow. So how the hell are you supposed to grab your bow and then unclip and pull your bow over your head? You can't even touch your bow. The only thing I could do right now is unclip. My bow's just gonna fall out the back. Well, that's no good either. So what I came up with, which I thought made a lot more sense, was, but unclip one of them, you're holding on to that strap, grab the strap on this side, hand them all to one side, and then just pull up. And now I can get a hold of my bow and I can pull it out. So the fact that with this system, I had this strap to grab a hold of to pull the bow uh, makes it possible for me to grab my bow even when my pack is fully loaded. And that's why I think this system works better than uh, the bow spider. Now, if your pack isn't fully loaded and you don't have a lot of stuff going on back there, then the bow spider probably works great and you can probably reach your bow and do this exactly how it's demonstrated on the Everly Stock website. But in this situation, fully loaded pack, which it's gonna be most of the time that you're moving, having that strap to grab a hold of, pull it forward, that makes all the difference. So that's how I rigged it up, works great. Um, I think it's a great product. So if you guys wanna have a quick release system on your elk hunting pack, think about getting, I, I, don't, I don't even remember what they call this thing. I think it's like, I think they literally call it the quick release strap. Um, and the butt bucket, but bucket, not butt pouch, but butt bucket. Um, so anyway, that's the quick release system from Everly Stock. Hopefully that was helpful to you. And, uh, the last video that I'm going to tell you about is my hunting clothes and my boots that I used while I was on the mountain. This one, I just wanted to cover, uh, clothing, the things that I was actually wearing while I was out in the woods hunting. Now, before I get into them though, I just wanna say that uh, it is really important to bring lots of different clothes uh, for when you're at camp. Uh, and uh, I think it's a good idea to have like your hunting clothes set aside and just bring a lot, a lot of clothes uh, for camp. You know, you wanna bring t-shirts, shorts, like extra socks, um, you know, whatever you need to be comfortable. Uh, but as far as going into the woods went, I was like, when I was packing, when I was buying gear, I was pretty convinced that when I went uh, into the woods, I was gonna have like a change of clothes in my bag. And I can tell you this right now, uh, when you you get up that mountain uh, and you're carrying all that stuff on your back, every little bit of weight that you're carrying that you don't absolutely need with you, you're gonna wanna leave it. So uh, with that in mind, you wanna have some clothes that are gonna last you the whole time. Um, now I bought some stuff based on other people's recommendations and I absolutely loved all of it. So I'll kind of go over the stuff that I liked, uh, that you guys might want to consider as well. First up socks. Um, there's this great company called farm to feet, farm to feet. Um, and these are the midway hunting socks that they have. Um, they're awesome. They're made of Merino wool and you might be thinking like what the heck's the big deal about merino wool but this was kind of my first time using merino wool and let me tell you this stuff is awesome uh now it's definitely not as cool as some of uh the more synthetic uh fibers that you can get clothes in like our uh our sns high pine camo um which personally i think is the absolute best that you can get for in florida but if you're hunting from an elevated position our camo is definitely the best choice um, and you can get that at our website swampandstompllc.com great quality materials um, <clears throat> great for florida when it's hot as heck but when you're going to places where it's colder merino wool is amazing um, it is naturally antibacterial and bacteria makes it stink um, <clears throat> it's also moisture wicking um, and wool in general will continue to insulate even when it's wet so if you do get wet like it's still going to keep you warm um, but i was astonished at how uh how well this like antibacterial function of merino wool worked most of the time you put on socks you go out you hike your feet get gross and when you take off your shoes it smells awful uh i was like 
for the first like three or four days, I couldn't believe it. Every time I took off my boots, I'd pick up my sock and smell it. And there was no odor. But my foot itself would smell bad, but the socks didn't pick up odor. So if you have to wear the same thing over and over again when you're spending three, four days in the woods, uh, these merino wool socks were amazing. Now they are kind of expensive, I'll say that. These clothes are not cheap, um, but I, I just don't think that there's a way around it. If you can find some merino wool um, socks and clothes anywhere else, do it. But I felt it was really important to get these socks because they, they have like extra um, cushion in places that you need it on the heel and stuff like that. And um, you know, they were just, they're designed uh, for hiking. And that's really important because if your feet are not comfortable, you start getting blisters and that's not good. So I highly recommend that you get yourself a couple pairs of these farm to feet midweight socks. I got three pairs of them, I only used two. These two that are right here, I never actually used them. And I only used two because uh, after the first week, I switched over to another pair um, and continued using those. You probably could get away with just having one pair. Um, I didn't carry them up the mountain with me, uh, or at least I didn't carry both pairs. Um, I just changed them back at base camp uh, halfway through the trip. Uh, if you have a way of doing laundry, like you could just get a bucket and some laundry detergent and just like do it by hand, rinse it out in the creek and hang it up to dry, that's totally an option. Um, and then you could probably get away with just getting one pair of them because they are like 25 bucks for a pair of socks. It's, it's a lot. All right, so another merino wool thing you're going to want to get, boxers. Um, I got these as cheaply as I could on Amazon. It's by a company called Nature Wool. Uh, it's not necessarily cheap though. They're still like 25 bucks for a pair of boxers. I ended up buying two pairs of these. Um, and again, like with the socks, I just switched them out halfway through the trip. And again, it doesn't stink. It's like incredible. My uh, nether regions that were protected by these boxers um, smell pretty bad after about a week, but the boxers never got stinky and it really contained the smell. Uh, which I guess matters when you're hunting because the animals can smell you. Um, but also, it's incredibly moisture wicking uh, and they're super comfortable to wear. Like, uh, th these, these were great. Um, again, 25 bucks, Amazon, nature wool, uh, get merino wool. Um, finally, I will say this I'm not a huge fan of this company, um, but I bought their stuff anyway because it just seemed like I had a, I had a coupon. And so I, I was able to get it relatively cheaply. Uh, this is First Light. I, I went with the, um, uh, I think this is their Fusion Camo. It's got a little bit of green in there. Um, again, I'm not a huge fan of the company, but this is a really good quality shirt. Like I, And same with the pants that I have back here. I'll talk about those in a sec. But they're really good quality. This is Merino wool. Uh, one thing I really liked about it is the hood on it. Um, the hood is like sort of cupped. So when you put it on, it like hugs your head. So you don't have like the hood like getting in your vision, getting in your eyes and stuff like that. But man, this thing was comfortable as heck. Again, no stank because it's merino wool. Um, and I pretty much, I wore it every, every darn day. Um, and then finally for the pants, I got the, um, these are the First Light uh, Corgit Guide Pants. Now, there's a few reasons that I wanted these. One, uh, they're somewhat waterproof and they're four-way stretch. You can stretch them in all directions. They're like super comfortable. Um, they've got great pockets. They're just, overall, they're just really good quality. Um, but I really like the fact that they were somewhat waterproof. So when I was coming out of the woods in the rain one day, like I, I didn't have any rain pants on. I just had these. I did put on some um, uh, some calf gaiters to sort of protect, like keep my stuff dry from the, the wet plants that I was walking through. But other than that, they did manage to keep me relatively dry. Um, and they're super comfortable and they never got stinky, even though it's not merino wool. Um, these were great. Um, one thing I do suggest you do is get some suspenders. There's like suspender loops for it that you hook a G hook onto. and. Um, I didn't buy them. I should have bought them because when you're rocking a belt and you're 
you've got your pack on your back, it's like really hard to pull your pants up and adjust them. So having suspenders on uh, to keep your pants up all the time would have been a better option. Um, so those were the hunting clothes that I was wearing. Um, I really liked all of them, so I recommend you pick some up if you're gonna be doing some cold weather hunting. But again, if you're gonna be hunting hot weather or in Florida, get yourself some SNS High Pine. And finally, boots. People talk a lot about boots when it comes to elk hunting because you're on your feet so much, you're hiking all the time. It's just really important that you have a good boot. Now that said, uh, a lot of people said, you know, you gotta have a really stiff boot because otherwise your feet are gonna hurt like crazy. Well, I didn't find that to be the case. These boots are the eight inch tactical uh, Merrill, uh, I think it's the Moab, the mother of all boots, the Moab uh, eight inch tactical. And it's basically the stiffest boot that Merrill has. Um, and I just, I've always liked Merrill and the main reason I went with this boot is because I already have some um, some Merrill Moab 2s um, that are a slightly shorter boot than this. I think they're like a, a six inch boot or something like that. But uh, I use those when I'm saddle hunting. Um, I really like them. The ones that I already had were uh, ventilators, so they allow water and air to just pass right through them. Uh, these ones are waterproof. So I went with these because they're honestly pretty cheap. I want to say they're like 125 bucks or something like that. Um, and the other guys were kind of like laughing at me like, oh, those things look like sneakers. Um, and they kind of do look like sneakers and they, I guess they feel kind of like sneakers too. But I'll tell you what, uh, my feet were comfortable and I was always, I always felt like I had a good grip um, and I was able to hike with the other guys, no problem. My feet really, you know, my feet would get sore i mean there's no way around that when you're hiking as much as you are during elk hunting but their feet were sore when mine were sore and i was really comfortable in these i'm not saying everybody's gonna be happy with these but they worked good for me and they were pretty cheap 125 bucks um, i'm definitely going to use them again one thing i really like about them is this zipper feature um, you can basically zip it up maybe there it is you can zip them up um, and then fold this little Velcro over and now it's in boot mode. It's ready to rock and roll. You're wearing it. You can tie your shoelaces and get it, you know, to the setting that you like it as tight as you want it. And then every time you take off your boot, you don't have to untie your shoelaces because if you untie your shoelaces, that basically means every single time you put your boot on, you have to like tie them up again and get them to just like the tightness that you like. With these, all I had to do was undo the Velcro, unzip, and it created enough space that I could get my food, my food, my foot out of it. Um, so that was one feature that I really liked about it. Uh, I did step on a few cactuses that kind of went through the sides, um, and that made the boot not 100% waterproof. But you know what? If you poke a hole in anything, it's generally not waterproof. Um, so anyway, that was the clothes that I was using while I was elk hunting. Um, hopefully. That was helpful. Um, if you are looking for some merino wool stuff and you don't have a coupon to get the first light stuff, uh, Scree Gear makes really good stuff as well. And that's actually the brand that I would have gone with if I didn't get the coupon for first light. Uh, Scree is S-K-R-E. Um, and their, their clothing without the coupon was about the same price as first light with the coupon. So it's about 25% uh, difference. Um, and their stuff's really good. So. Um, I probably am gonna buy some of theirs next year, uh, especially if I can find a coupon to get uh, to get it around like Black Friday or something like that. So, anywho, that's all I got on that. Uh, hopefully, you guys watched the whole series of all this elk stuff, um, and hopefully, you found it helpful. Uh, if you got any questions or comments, drop them down below. Make sure that you're subscribed to our channel so that you can get notifications. Actually, if you want notifications, you got to click the little bell. If you don't want notifications, just subscribe because it still helps the channel out. Just having those extra subscribers, uh, but you won't get annoying notifications. If you like annoying notifications, click the bell. And um, yeah, hopefully you guys do that so you can see when we release the, I don't want to say more fun videos, but the more exciting videos when we actually harvest animals. Uh, we should have plenty more of those coming up this season. So thank you guys for watching and we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace.